I am Jim Collison, live from our virtual studios around the world. This is Gallup's Theme Thursday, Season 6, recorded on May 28th, 2020. Theme Thursday is a Gallup webcast series that dives deep into the Clifton Strengths themes, one theme at a time. This season, based on developing teams and managers with Clifton Strengths, and today's theme is empathy. If you're listening live, love to have you join us in the chat room. There's actually a link right above me to it, the YouTube page. Jump in that chat room, ask your questions. If you have questions after the fact, you can send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Don't forget, if you're on YouTube, subscribe to us. That way you get notified Whenever we produce produce something new, and click that little like button too. That kind of helps us get discovered. And if you want to listen to us as a podcast on any podcast app, search Gallup Webcasts or Theme Thursday. Michael Libran is our host today. She's a senior workplace consultant here at Gallup. Feeling a little more energized. And welcome back to Theme yeah. Thursday. Guys, if you don't join live, you really should. These are the greatest humans on the planet in our chat group right now. Thank you. We um, we're talking about empathy today. And I would say empathy and relationship building are both labels that we tend to stop at thinking it tells the whole story. So we've got a lot to talk about today because uh, it doesn't tell the whole story. This season, season six, we are exploring every theme through the lens of how it shows up in a team. Uh, and we know that strong Strong teams have five things going for them. If you want to read more about those five truths of strong teams, check out the book Strengths Based Leadership. It kind of sneaks in there. It's in the introduction around page 70. Um, and we're going to explore empathy through the lens of these five truths of a team. The reason we're doing this is not because there's explicit research between it, but it's because it helps us think about that theme of empathy beyond just what does it mean for me, but how does that really translate to what it means for my team. So let's start with the, the short definition here of empathy. This is how it shows up on your own profile. Um, when you read it um, uh, near near the end of your Clifton Strengths 34, this short definition is you recognize and oh my gosh, I didn't change it. That's developer. Uh, so <laughs> the theme of empathy, I don't have the exact words, but I'll just read you mine. So for me, empathy is um, number 17 on my profile. So if I scroll to the end, I'm sorry, I can't share my screen with you, but if you have not checked out your Clifton Strengths 34 report recently, you really should. It's designed to be one that you come back to over and over again. Um, and near um, page 23 of that report, you've got short definitions and they're written as if it describes you. So I'm going to scroll all the way there and read my empathy. And it says this, People exceptionally talented in the empathy theme can sense other people's feelings by imagining themselves in others' lives or situations. Mm. In my own coaching, empathy is definitely one that knocks people off a little bit because if they see it really high, they think, oh, this is good because I learned empathy training. And if they see it really low, they think, oh, this is bad because it means I don't like people. But really what empathy is about is that sixth sense, the ability to feel what other people are feeling without being told. Um, and let's think about how this relates to a team. Um, so the first truth that we're going to explore is how teams um, explore conflict. We know that conflict does not destroy strong teams because those teams are focused instead on results. Nice adaptability, by the way. What does focus on results mean for empathy then? A focus on results probably means they're feeling the emotions of others as they progress toward or away from the results that really matter to them. But you know, this question might be more appropriate for empathy by focusing on another portion of that strong team truth, which is how they deal with conflict. Um, as part of a strong team, someone with dominant empathy can sense when conflict is happening, even before it's said out loud. Um, they can address it. They can direct that emotion toward a focus on results. I think about sometimes empathy being the person in the room, maybe who can say, hey, um, uh, something's brewing here. We need to talk about that because it's going to help us get closer to what we need to accomplish. And this one may not be as intuitive. I think some of the other themes when we think about tracking progress, it is. But how does empathy track progress? You know, it's about sensing, uh, but that experience that somebody with empathy has goes much deeper than just accurately guessing how other people feel. I think the the first level of understanding the Clifton Strengths theme of empathy is thinking about it almost like a a carnival game where I can guess how old you are. You know, <laughs> empathy can say, mm, "You're feeling happy," mm -hmm. um, but that's not it. It's it's so much more. I think intuitive than that. Uh, when things are going really well, someone with empathy feels that for themselves 
in addition to feeling the good energy that other people have. Uh, when we're off track as a team, the person with empathy notices first by what being off track means to the emotions of the people in that group. Um, they might feel the emotional reaction that people have toward progress, as well as uh, toward conflict, um, more than the results or the conflict itself. They're feeling how other people respond to it. Hmm. Okay, let's look at uh, the truth number two. Strong teams prioritize what's best for the organization and then move forward. And how does someone with empathy focus on that larger goal or purpose rather than the, their own? Well, someone with empathy is absorbing the emotions of everyone else around them. So it's no stretch to think how they might experience goals or values outside of themselves. I think what empathy can offer to a great team in terms of this truth specifically is their ability to break down organizational goals that might seem really big um, into individual experiences. The person on your team with strong empathy will feel how the decisions made at a bigger level affect people on the team. And I think with practice and when they do it on purpose, they're also probably likely to maybe even predict how future leadership decisions are going to make individual contributors feel. They can humanize those organizational goals through the lens of emotion, really bringing into reality the effect, which is the feelings that we know are, are important, uh, bringing that effect to the center of the conversation. Empathy may not seem like an action theme, but how, yeah. what what does inspire someone with empathy to take you're, action? Yeah, you're right, Jim. You know, I, I, I don't think empathy really is about action. Uh, and maybe sometimes that's where we get it mixed up with the, the value of being empathetic and we think about it as a result. Really, the theme is about connection. Um, they're feeling what their colleagues, their partners, their communities are feeling. There's no extra push necessarily to act upon those feelings as much as there is to act upon the connections to other people that the shared emotion is creating. Um, so the real value empathy can provide to a team to support this truth is that strong teams prioritize, again, what's best for the organization and then move forward. That The value that empathy brings is they can serve as that emotional barometer on how ready the team is to move toward action. Uh, they can be the ear to the ground that's paying careful attention to the emotional health of the group um, and their readiness as a team to prioritize what's best for, for others or for the organization or to tackle anything that might be in their way of that readiness and, and of doing it well. You know, another great thing about being live, you know, I always joke about it. Sometimes we approach these themes from name it, name it, and name it. Like we never really get off the name it. This, as I'm watching the chat room today, I just love the way they're they're adding their claim and aim in the chat room. You're talking about this and like, yeah, but for me, it's like this. And it's super yeah. important, right, that we get to that step of like, how are we owning this and what are we doing with it for, uh, for success? Uh, as we look at truth number three, let's keep that in mind. What's number three? Well, number three is that strong teams are as committed to their personal lives as they are to their work. If you want to hear a little soapbox about this, you can skip back on the live channel <laughs> about 10 minutes. <laughs> and, and how does empathy show up in someone's personal life? Uh, we often talk about empathy as having a sixth sense. They can't see ghosts or previous versions of Bruce Willis, but they can <laughs> feel what that's another thing about being live. Sometimes the weird ideas just get out. They can feel what other people are feeling. Um, and that likely leads them to being very tuned in to the people on the team. If you have someone in your life with empathy, you might describe them as rarely surprised by the by how people feel. They might be the person who knows something's up before you tell them. Um, they might also be the one who feels really deep feelings, even for strangers. Um, this could manifest as crying easily during a sad movie or celebrating with like real field elation when their team or even somebody else's team wins a big playoff. I admit it. I cried Hallmark movies. What questions could a manager use to tap into this empathy seen in a personal life? Yeah, I think it's what are you noticing about your community? How's your home team doing? Uh, what character have you connected to lately? Uh, what do you like to do for yourself? How are you feeling? What has been a high point that you felt recently? What do we what do we say for uh, truth number four? 
Truth number four, um, please don't misunderstand us. <laughs> this one is strong teams embrace diversity, and they do in every aspect of the word. This truth is about what kind of diversity does the theme bring in addition to other areas of, of diversity that are equally important to making a team strong. And with that in mind, what are some descriptor words that we might use? Yeah, what's different about empathy? Um, empathy, you could say, is emotional, aware, tuned in, open, insightful, inviting, and sensitive. And I put in brackets, in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And nothing wrong with quiet crying at a Hallmark movie. But really, I'm just going to say it. About sensitive <laughs> when you think about tools yeah. or like, yeah. Um, yeah, I want a really sensitive, you know, metric. I want something that's going to notice that that's what, what sensitive is for, for empathy is that it's not going to uh, miss the emotions that are swirling around in the world. I got distracted. Did you get all those, all the, the names? So. Okay. <laughs> what unique, what unique perspective does empathy bring to a team? They can walk into a room and feel if something's off, uh, you know, in a way they can feel something coming. They can be that, uh, that, that emotional barometer, both positive and negative before it even arrives. So listen to the person on your team who has empathy, honor them, use their talents, ask them to be a voice for how things are landing, uh, tap into the reality that people's perception, their feelings aren't just waves to be ridden or, or sort of surfed around. They are clues to how we're doing and how we can do better. Let's look at uh, truth number five. Jim's favorite truth. Strong teams are magnets for talent. This quote is directly from the Strengths-Based Leadership book. Another way to spot a strong team is to look for the one everyone wants to be on. And what is it about empathy that will draw people to it? You know, on a personal level, having someone with empathy on your side can mean you don't have to explain yourself. Think about the people in your world who... Like you, maybe you're ready to describe something and they just say, I know, and you believe them. <laughs> that's, that's magnetic, magnetically attractive. And that's empathy. If you have empathy, find ways to express this to people. Uh, turn what you are sensing into a great question that let people know you're picking it up. Um, you might try something like, hey, I'm hearing this. I wonder how that makes you feel. Um, what do you wanna explore about this together? Uh, it's, it's, I think, a maturity aspect of empathy of instead of saying, hey, I bet you're upset today, mm -hmm. uh, you can say, I'm hearing you say this, this, and this. So it's explaining the clues that you're picking up on in addition to what you're feeling in a way that opens the door for that other person to start to share. Yeah, as we wrap it, think about that. How, what's that gift that empathy brings to a team? Empathy can accelerate the connections between people. Think about how it relates to a team. It doesn't just have to be the connection that that person with empathy is having. If you have empathy, think about how you can use that emotional sensitivity, you know, that that meter or that radar that's really on, how you can use that to connect team members with each other. Uh, you don't have to shoulder the full weight of what everyone is feeling. You can also be the connector who senses great partnerships. Um, you can sense who's really ready for collaboration. You can make that introduction, that connection, and strengthen the entire team. Oh, okay, that's some great advice, by the way. If you, if you didn't catch all of that, go back and listen to it again. Michael, let's recap the five. Results, not conflict. Do what's best for the organization and then move forward. Uh, work and personal lives are equally important. Embrace diversity and magnets for talent. Again, you can read more about all five of those around page 70 of the book Strengths Based Leadership. All right. We've got a great talent mindfulness exercise for you today. So sit back. Micah, I'm going to turn it over to you. What do you have for us? So this is a practice for yourself. Uh, while empathy is all about sensing the emotions of others, talent mindfulness, which is what we're doing right now, is designed to help you tune your observations inward so that you can get to know your own lens of talent. And again, the goal of this is not just a cool thing to do. It's, it's helping you practice your own talent so that you can use it better. You know, strengths-based development can't just be, Jim mentioned this, can't just be about naming and naming and naming the talents and unpacking it until we've exhausted our ability to spot talent in the wild. If it becomes that naming game we've already lost, we will win when we to turn our understanding of talent into interventions that we can use. And when we're, I think, brave enough to realize our interventions are built on our own lens, and it's very likely that's different from somebody else's. 
So for the next three to five minutes, I'm going to guide you through some reflection questions that are designed to help you make the space inside your own mind a little bit more welcoming. Uh, these questions are designed to inspire you to spend even more intention in the practice of designing your own best strategy for attacking what's in front of you. Uh, the opposite of that might be reading a book on how somebody else has done it. Uh, but really, strengths-based development helps you say your best strategies are already within yourself. Today, we're going to start with, with silence. I'd like you to use this short time to feel what it feels like to be in your own body right now. You might stretch or breathe or close your eyes. I'm going to hold space for some silence, and I'll bring you back in just a moment. Feelings are powerful things. How we feel determines how we think about our space, our circumstance, our other people, uh, and how we think about ourselves. How we think about ourselves has a big part to play in what we do, how we act, and how we show up in our own lives. We're going to get to feelings in a minute, but we're going to start with observations. For today's practice, I want to keep your focus on work, whatever work means to you. Think about your work over the past week. What is something you've noticed more than three times about your work recently? A theme, a concern, an idea? What have you noticed? As you're exploring your own observation, how is that making you feel right now? However you feel about this observation, you're right. We're not here to fix or change that emotion you have about your work observation. We are going to use it. Let's think about the next two weeks of work that you have ahead of you. How do you want to feel two weeks from now? It doesn't have to be lofty. It's only 14 days. How do you want to feel about your work in two weeks? Now let's make this your micro challenge. Here's the challenge. It's to improve your chances of feeling that way about your work in two weeks. Even if you're already confident that you will feel that way, I want you to think, what can you do to improve your chances of feeling that way? What will you need to observe in the next week? And open up just a little bit more. Think about the next two weeks of work. What will you need to observe about your work or your approach to your work in the next two weeks in order to feel how you'd like to feel. Now bring it back to where you are right now and think about this last question. What do you need to do about this today? That's your talent mindfulness for today. All right. Good work. You made it. We did it. Nicely done. A couple, couple, <laughs> couple reminders for folks before they go. One, if you want to access all of our resources that are available, including the store. Uh, we talked about strengths-based leadership. You can purchase that book through our store. 
head out to gallup.com slash Clifton Strengths and kind of everything is there. There's a lot there. So you might want to spend some time working your way through it, but gallup.com slash Clifton Strengths. If you log into access from there, it takes you right to the Strengths dashboard. While you're there at the bottom of the page, you can sign up for the Clifton Strengths community newsletter. If you have any questions about anything we talked about, you can always send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. I've been getting a lot of emails through that account lately, Micah. We said that for eight years and I, in the last six months, I don't know why. All of a sudden, everybody's using it. So we appreciate that. Good to hear from you through that channel as well. If you want to follow the webcast and join us live, because it's always better live, head out to gallup.eventbrite.com and a complete list of all the webcasts that are going to be available for you that you could join live for are listed there. Love to have you do that. Love to have you join us there. The, the uh, 2020 Gallup at Work Summit is impending. If you're listening live, you might have a chance to join us. If not, you probably missed it for the year, but that's okay. We're going to do it in 2021. We'd love to have you join us for that as well. Gallupatwork.com. And if if you are a live folk and, folks and you're coming to join us, we want to see a 4 p.m. That's going to be the best session, right, Micah? 4 p.m.? Four to five. It'll be the best. Okay, good. I, can I'm, say it. I, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I was okay. It'll be the that. it'll be the most like a party. We can say it that. will be. It is the, the after party, and then there's yeah. an after after party. So those will be available for you as well. If you want to join us in our social groups, facebook.com slash group slash called the coach. Many of you do about thirteen or fourteen thousand there. So join us in that group. Or if you're not a Facebooker, and that's okay too, join uh, the Clifton Strengths Train Coaches page. Love to have you as a part of that as well. I'll let you in, ask, and I'll let you in. I want to thank you for joining us today. We will do a little bit of a post-show afterwards. And again, it's better to join us live. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.